rest of your life. So we're, we're good to go? You are good to go. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the Tuesday special sort of finance committee meeting this morning. Um, what we'd like to do, and, I, and again, Larissa, maybe do we have guests that have joined us on any of our formats? We do have a couple of attendees that are here with you on Zoom. Um, we have a couple of members of the school board and um, also school administrative staff. Okay, so maybe, you know, I think if you could just, you know, we, we always do at the beginning of all these meetings, but just kind of repeat the, the sure. process, if you will, a little bit about for those that yep. do reach us. So if you decide to join us here on Zoom as an attendee, please just raise your hand using the raise hand feature. If you have a comment, um, the chair of this committee, Councillor Hayes, will take public comment towards the end of the meeting, tends to be when that happens. And if you have a question um, regarding what you're seeing, if you're watching us on YouTube, then please email that into towncouncil at scarboroughmaine.org. So I guess with that, I'd like to call this to order. And I think Colette, if you could just kind of do your usual those in attendance this evening or this morning, I guess. <laughs> this morning, 10 a.m. Uh, Councillor Hayes. Here, present. Councillor Kleistein. Here. Councillor Clucci. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, item number three is the approval of the minutes from June 16th. Um, do I have a motion for approval? Motion to approve. Is there a second? I, I haven't had a chance to look at them from the 16th. So, okay. I, I propose waiting. Well, a second and then I'll, I'll vote no, cause I haven't looked at them. <laughs> um, yeah, I can second. I think I can second. Can I by rules of order? Somebody? Yes, yeah, so I'll second. Um, and with that, is there any discussion of those minutes? Betsy, I, I fully appreciate um, you haven't had a chance to see them. So I think if you have any edits or suggestions, we will take that into account. But for now, does anybody have any comments? John, do you have anything on them? No, I don't have any comments. Uh, Colette did include them with uh, an email this morning. If, if you wanted to take a quick look, Betsy, they're pretty detailed, actually. Right. I saw the email. I okay. I just didn't have time to look at them. That's okay. They're they're pretty straightforward. So like maybe um, you know we can we can take a vote on them, and then Betsy, if you have any edits, we can we can get them in. Um, so Colette, you want to kind of take us through. Uh, Certainly. Um, Councillor Hayes? Yes. Councillor Clucci? Yes. Councillor Gleistein? Abstain. Thank you. And then Betsy, if you have anything, just let us know and we can we can met at them appropriately. Sounds good. And I think with that, then the next item it is really going to be the, the, the gist of this meeting and the heart of this meeting is really kind of we met earlier this week. We had gone through several recommendations that were made by the town manager. We discussed them. We wanted to come back. We wanted to have an opportunity for the Board of Education to have their meeting last night to see if they made any adjustments or had any conversations around some of the things that we had talked about. Um, I don't believe that they did. So I think with that, Tom, you want to kind of walk us through again sort of where we are and what remaining items for us to discuss? Certainly, uh, and very much appreciate uh, the extra few days to fine tune the numbers. Uh, I thought this would be an easy exercise. Ruth and I were at it most of the most of the intervening hours from your, your last meeting, uh, but are confident that we've kind of trued things up. The numbers have changed slightly from kind of that high level presentation, but certainly they're all in concept, all in keeping. Um, and, and a couple of the changes had to do with. Uh, uh, moving things from appropriated to bonding and revenue impacts and the like. And we can certainly uh, focus on those very minor changes. But uh, what we've presented to you today is uh, essentially what I reviewed with you uh, earlier this week on Tuesday. And Peter, as you said, uh, the school board did take second reading last night. Um, I, I can't verify it firsthand, but I'm not aware that there were any changes beyond um, what their finance committee had recommended to the full board. Uh, so there's really no material change uh, that I'm aware of at this point. 
Uh, having said that, I think it's certainly your prerogative as town finance committee to do what you wish in terms of passing on a recommendation to the full council. And in that regard, I, I, I do recommend that you um, consider what, it, what we've put together and what there seemed to be some conceptual consensus for earlier this week. Uh, the format that we've put together just probably would benefit us all if I just oriented uh, everyone to the document that's before you. And uh, Larissa, could you share that screen? So this format, I think by now is somewhat familiar with you. It's the one that I've been kind of carrying throughout your deliberations. Um, and so this list of projects on the first page are, are uh, uh, line items, again, should be fairly familiar territory. I did add the final two items on that list, uh, the first list, and those came forward for the first time uh, earlier this week. That's uh, the town's portion of the debt savings for the advance refunding. Hey, Tom? Uh, yes. Is there anyone, Larissa, as she's doing that, can you highlight or just somehow, could she highlight the things that we talked about this week that were the new items, if you will? I can't highlight, Peter, but can you see my cursor? Yep, I can see your cursor. Okay, so I can do that. That's the, the extent of the highlighting opportunity I have. Okay, when we get, okay, go ahead, Tom, and then maybe, okay, okay sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so, so from the running list, and, and this list has been kind of built over time through the course of your deliberations as finance committee, but the two yeah. most recent additions are where uh, her pointer is right now. It's the town's portion of advanced refunding savings, and that's 46, 538. Uh, you may recall, at uh, earlier, I, I just had the bulk savings, if you will. We now know what the allocation is between town and school, and we've attributed it appropriately. Yep. And then the, the final item there is the uh, fire EMS contract savings of fifty-two thousand. That's uh, that's shown as a as an adjustment as well. And that was what we ratified at the town council meeting. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So now we can legitimately do that. I was a bit presumptuous on Tuesday morning, but uh, now it's it's uh, it's good to go. Uh, I don't recall that there are any changes on the revenue portion. Hey, Tom, yes. I, just, I want to make sure that I, I'm reading this correctly. Um, this was from the first read, right? Which when we took the first read, we went through the list of things the town had already done before first read to bring the first read budget. So this doesn't even really represent all of the reductions. This is just what we've done since first read. Is that correct? Accurate? Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I, I'm glad you brought that up, Councillor. Um, I'd like to prepare a separate slide, and I think it would be appropriate to do it for your second reading to really show that progression. Yeah. Uh, we did take advantage of the opportunity with the delayed start of the budget process to do some really hard looking at our budget. Right. Uh, and then made further adjustments in first reading. And now this list is really focusing on what's happened since first that's reading. It. Right. Yep. Yeah, I, that's what I thought. I just wanted to confirm yep. it. Thank you. Yeah. And, 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 and again, just the, the kind of data points that we wanted to report in big picture is, uh, is first reading and then what adjustments you're considering now and wh where that ends up with. Uh, but there are, other data points that we can fill in around this and, and I will before next Wednesday. That's helpful. And Tom, just, just as a placeholder for folks that are listening, that prior to first read, some of some of the things that Betsy is just referencing, it was more than a million dollars, wasn't it, that you took out? I believe it was. Yeah, I I'd reported that uh, earlier on and, and I will bring that forward and, yeah. and provide yeah. a, a clearer picture of that. That's great. Yeah. I think it was 2.7 million, Peter. Was it? Wow. Okay. Well, 2.7 is the total reduction at first reading. Yeah. Um, 2 million roughly was school related. 765, as I recall, was town related. Uh, but I think that to the point, uh, there were a lot of changes on the town side even before that, even yeah. before the budget was presented. And I'll document those for you. I think, be, I think that slide would be important to have. So that's great, Tom, to have sure. it. Yep. We'll, we'll, we'll clean that up and have that for you. Thank you. So, I think the only question that I had on this slide was the beach revenue police. Was that the amount added back in because we are going to have the uh, the um, officers at Higgins Beach? Or 
Can you refresh me on that one? You could suggest that, uh, you know, Councillor Hayes is the one that brought it to my attention. In the current year, we, <laughs> we are bringing in $30,000 in beach reserves to offset, generally offset beach uh, enforcement and patrols. I had not done that in my proposed budget. He, I think, correctly asked the question why, and I said, no reason, we can do that. So uh, I wouldn't say it's directly related to Higgins Beach because uh, I've demonstrated, I think, that that can cover itself and then some in terms of fines and, and, uh, and, and other revenue sources. Um, it does not seem like an inappropriate thing to do. We do make a fairly heavy investment at the beach area and uh, arguably without that attractive nuisance uh, at the beach, we wouldn't have these expenses. So uh, to the extent we have separate non-property tax revenues to help offset some of those expenses, that seems appropriate. Yeah, John, I, I think how we got there is as we started to look at the, at the line item budgets and public safety, there was, we looked at the number for Higgins Beach and what it cost, and we were looking to cut those hours back to be like the other beaches. And then that's through that process, we realized that there wasn't this revenue hadn't been applied to that. So it was part of the conversation okay. from prior years that the additional resources are covered by the additional parking fee or, or beach reserves are, are, are the way that we financed it last year. Okay. So just a, a couple of final points on this slide uh, for me. Uh, so what this amounts to since first reading, we're looking at a, a, a total adjustment on the appropriation side of $793,097. And you'll see the, it's the total of that listing. Um, with the exception of one, they're all, all reductions. I am proposing that we add $3,000 back in for diversity training in light of some of our challenges nationwide. Uh, but that's the only exception. Everything else are reductions. And then on the revenue side, there's a uh, kind of a mixed bag. We have a some new revenue, but uh, significant uh, revenue reductions as well. And so the the net of that process uh, from the revenue perspective reduces overall revenues by five hundred sixty three thousand four sixty. And, so, and Peter, I have a comment on this to yeah. make sure I'm understanding it because you know th there's been a lot of active community engagement, which. I think most people know, I really appreciate, um, regardless of, of, you know, whether, you know, where people stand on something, I definitely want to hear it. Uh, but, you know, there's been some, I don't want to say insinuation, that's sort of a loaded word, but that, you know, we're trying to use revenues to drive down, um, you know, where, where we're bringing the budget at. But I want to point out that um, we're pretty much saying that we think revenues in the form of excise taxes, building permits, fees, and all of that are gonna stay flat. We've, we've, as a matter of fact, said that's gonna go up by about 0.2%. Um, so that's a conservative estimate based on you know what could happen with the um, economy. Uh, so I think people should be aware of that. And then we're still saying that we will get a 51% increase from the uh, state for homestead exemption this year. Um, you know, folks I'm talking to are saying, you know, uh, a lot of the state stuff is at risk, but people should understand that we're still estimating that we're going to get a 51% increase in that. We're estimating that we're going to uh, get a, a refund from the business equipment tax is going to stay flat. And again, that's that's a risk too, because business equipment taxes is, is, as Larissa explained to me, you know, it's, it's hard to estimate, but, you know, businesses are the ones we know that may be, may be hurt. So hopefully, you know, we had a, a, a local factory who was here for dozens of years, who's going to close down. Hopefully somebody will move in to take over those business equipment. You know, we know Abbott's expanding. So, you know, we're being conservative on that. We're not saying we're going to get more, but we're not saying we're going to get less. And then, you know, finally, we say that for municipal state sharing, we're still going to get 11.7% more than we got last year. So again, um, I think, you know, we've tried to find that balance. I've been more, I think Peter and I have been more on the side of saying, hey, wait, you know, we, you know, this could, this picture could be a lot worse. I think John and maybe Tom and some others have been saying, you know, it might not be so bad. You know, that, that's what the back and forth is about. You know, I think we've tried to strike a balance here. We've listened to our town manager. 
but you know, for people to say that we're cutting revenues, you know, revenue estimates, you know, for so that we can get the budget down, um, I think the numbers belie that that is not accurate. Thank you. Just if I could, I'm, I'm a, a bit concerned. I just want to say it on the record. Um, I've heard Councilor Gleistein say a couple times earlier this week and now just now, you know, you've asked my opinion. This, this is your budget. These are your estimates to do what you will with. You've asked my opinion. I've given it. Uh, I welcome any and all other opinions. And so I just want to be clear that, uh, you know, I do not have the crystal ball. And, right. I, and uh, I'm giving you the best the best guess estimate I have given the circumstances we're in. So, right. and I told, uh, and that's where I'm at. I think, like I say, I think there was a lot of back and forth. I think you guys jumped in, you did the analysis that, you know, you felt was appropriate. And, you know, we landed on this place and I respect your opinion and where we've landed. Um, I just think it's not accurate. Some folks were saying that we're trying to use revenue to, to make cuts. We're not, you know. Fair enough. No, no, your point's well taken there, Councillor. So the, the net effect of all those changes is uh, reducing the total budget uh, by $229,637 on the municipal side. And uh, it's worth noting that, uh, well, I just wanna make sure that we're mindful of the different components that come into that. That, that number of 229,637 is not all that awe-inspiring, but, uh, I think you all appreciate what it took to get there. There were significant cuts on the expense side, and I think some thoughtful analysis and reductions in revenues on the other side. It produces, you know, a, a fairly modest number, but um, but it's there's a lot of work packed into that number for sure. And I think all of you appreciate that. So carrying on to the next page, the same format. We're Tom, be before we leave the municipal side, I just want to make sure, at least, I mean, it's so many numbers, so many things back and forth. This does not include, at this point in time, this budget that we'll be talking about today does not include the senior tax credit at this point. Is that correct? That's correct. You'll see it on the subsequent slide here. Okay. And then two, it also doesn't, it doesn't carry any funding for the library expansion at this point because it, it was a bonded issue. Then they were going to put it in appropriations, but we haven't put it in appropriations yet. So that's not on this list either. Correct. I, I think I just misspoke though. Um, this does, and you'll see in a moment, this does include the reduction of 58,000 for the senior property tax. It does not include, based on your decisions earlier this week, any funding for library um, work. So, so it does include the funding of the, C, the increase in the senior tax credit? Yeah, Larissa, if you could just advance yeah, to okay. uh, I think that the final slide in this format. Here you go, back up. One more. Uh, I had thought we'd never put that in the budget as a formal act of either the finance yeah. committee or the town council. So, Larissa, one down, please. Right there. Uh, I included the fifty-eight thousand additional monies in my original proposed budget, and they survived through first reading. Um, I'm showing them coming out here, and I think Councillor Clucci. Okay acknowledge the fact that the council really hasn't reconciled that matter. So that's a point of some discussion for sure. But in my numbers, in my calculation, I'm carrying that being reduced by that amount. Okay, that's what I thought. You've got it. So you've, in your numbers that we're talking about right now, it's staying at the same level that it currently is. Correct. Is that a fair statement? That is. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, so back up one more, Larissa. Thank you. Sorry about that. So really, we did wanted to carry through, and, and this is uh, this display or presentation is really modeled after the different components that uh, that we report on our uh, tax rate comp sheet. Um, and I guess we got to go one more, Larissa. Sorry. No, the other way. Here we go. So first page dealt with municipal. Uh, moving down, uh, now looking at the education budget, you'll see a, uh, a reduction. Uh, this is a reduction that the, uh, I believe the school board finance committee brought forward to you on the 9th and was carried on by presentation uh, last earlier this week on the 16th. So I've simply uh, booked that number, if you will. Um, as you recall, 
Pardon? Just, just a quick question. The sheet that I have that we reviewed this week, though, I thought that number was 76,820. Or is that, or is that come? No, you're, you are correct. I wonder, Ruth, could you explain what the difference there is? If you know. Ruth? I believe at the time, uh, No, I guess I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm just looking no, at I, I think it had, no, I don't know what it is. I don't remember. I think we talked about it earlier, but. Um, if, yeah, I, I, I think if we can get together with Kate Bolton, we can reconcile that piece. You know, it's a $6,000 difference. Yes, uh, it's not much money. I was just, I just wanted to make sure we're talking the same item that we had looked at on Benign. We are. The intent is, and what we will do for certain is to reflect what the school board finance committee and I, what I believe the BOE did in second reading last night. We'll book whatever that number is. Okay. And I apologize for that. Um, no worries. Just I just want to. I, there's so many numbers. I'm just trying to make yep. sure we're tracking with what's in, what's out, and where we are. Fair enough. And then uh, the exercise that we undertook earlier this week was to identify savings across the, the budgets for purposes of really uh, making certain that we're covering the pandemic costs. So we're showing, um, you know, funding this fully. And I think that's a real important component uh, to be talking about. There seems to be still some confusion in the community that uh, that, that money is not provided for. So I'm hopeful we can um, address that concern um, you know, effectively over the next several weeks. Um, I, I, I went on a, a hunt trying to figure out what number was included at first reading for pandemic costs. And I struggled to, to locate those documents, but I think that might be something that's worth including where you show the first reading number. There was actually a pandemic. Yeah, fair enough. Cost. About four, 430, I think. John. That sounds about right, but I, I just couldn't find the document. Right. No, yeah. that's a great point. I, I, 430 mm -hmm. sticks in my mind. We can confirm that, but you're right. We should be providing for, because uh, I think Councillor Hayes has made this point at many of you, that uh, there has been money since first reading for this uh, right along. And so that's a good point. We'll, we'll identify that number and include that in the first reading column here where it says zero. Yeah, Tom, I, I think the Board of Education did give us a number in their, in their memo to us of what they wanted for pandemic funding. I think the, the everything was included in the first read, except for I think they had removed the three bus drivers. And I think the three bus drivers were about 126,000. So I, that 430 number seems to be in the ballpark, I think. Yep. We'll confirm it. Thank you. Yep. Good. Thanks. Good call, John. Thank you. And then uh, again, from the school side, there was a slight reduction on ed, uh, uh, we've combined adult ed and school nutrition. I think the the reduction was actually on for adult ed for adult ed specifically. Um, I can't explain what that was, but again, we're just booking that savings. Um, I do have the uh, difference speech on that seventy thousand for the school, if you want. Please. So um, initially, it was the seventy six eight twenty. There was an adjustment, and I'm not sure what that is, was of $64,099 that was added back. And then 57929 was the actual amount of the advance refunding for the school's portion. So if you subtract the 76,820, add in 64,099, and then back out 57,929 for the advance, that comes to the 70,650. And just another question, because you know, kudos to everyone who's tracking the exact number. Because because when I saw the 533 this morning, I did think, well, you know, I thought it was 556, but I didn't have time to go track that back down. Uh, but Sarah just uh, just asked via chat um, why that's 533 820 now instead of 556, which is, I believe, what it's been since June 9th. I I yeah. think it's a June, June 16th meeting on Tom's uh, sheet, the amount of the savings that were seen on that sheet equaled 533,820. Right. So we just added that back in too. All right, gotcha. All right thank you. 
Yeah, it, it, it's I mean, the thing that we had talked about that we had identified as potential adjustments to get us there. We did talk about if there was remaining balance to be funded, that you know that would would be something that would be on the operational budget of of the board of education. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. right. I, my exercise took us as close as I could, uh, and I think we did discuss openly that it, it is slightly short and, and you could fill that gap if you wished. Yeah, I'm re recalling it now. Yep. So I. So does that make sense? This I'm sheet? still confused about the 70,000, but you guys can sort through that for now. Let's let's assume those numbers are work out. So yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite hearing Ruth's explanation. It really has to do with uh, what I presented to you last week we've since allocated the actual debt service savings. And so that, that's the difference there. Ah, gotcha. Oh, so I, okay. think that's, I think that's the correct number. Yeah. I gotcha. Okay, I understand now. Okay. Ruth, do you know what was added back in the 64099? Do you know what that was for? No, I don't have those numbers. I think school probably has those. Okay. We have the I number, we just don't know the detail. Right. And then the last sheet goes on to capital. And this is the this was a vexing problem for us just to kind of reconcile uh, all the moving parts, but uh, we're confident we have it now. Uh, so based on what I proposed, uh, you know, we've done some fine tune detail and I don't know if we've actually met exactly what Councillor Gleistein was looking for, but we have prepared uh, two details that uh, We'll take a look at here for both town capital and school capital that will show you some of the particulars. But what's reported here is just kind of the high level, the rolled up number, if you will. Uh, so you'll see based on your, I'll see direction as from consensus, there were changes on the municipal capital budget of uh, 1.688 million. Um, can you can you go through what those were? I know it's. Yep. Well, that's the turf field. You, you've got a schedule of what we did take. Yeah, Larissa, just uh, scroll ahead two, two more. There you go. So those are the, this is the entirety of what's remaining on the school capital, uh, excuse me, town capital. Uh, there's only one appropriated item for $10,000 that has always been there and is still there. But your direction as of earlier this week was to remove uh, the uh, turf and track project, the two, 669 numbers and yeah, then yeah. also the um, what still was being shown is 350 for the library building expansion you might recall they have you know after the budget was presented come back with a lower number uh, but we hadn't made any formal change yet so uh, that still exists in the budget and so that totals the you know that those three items total that one six one million six hundred eighty-eight thousand dollar change in municipal capital. And 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 Betsy and John, is that your recollection? Are you guys comfortable with that on the municipal capital side? That that's it is. A, I did have a question. Um, so, you know, the the one point two. I think people, uh, if I understood everything, need to understand that will go to the voters um, once the town council decides determines to put it on the referendum. Um, but that has to be in as a placeholder in case it gets approved in November. And then the 867, that's not a capital piece of equipment, right, Tom? So that won't have to go to the voters. That's ongoing maintenance that we're doing for the roads. Uh, it doesn't go to the voters because of it's a, it qualifies in as, as an exclusion in, I think it's uh, section 907.1 of the charter that speaks to voter, voter approval uh, so it's a public works project and thereby exempt from that process. So really we're talking about 2.2, I mean, I mean about 1.2 um, and the voters get to approve one point, uh, an additional 1.2 that we're putting out there. And uh, I think people might be interested to look at the, the capital plan and see what we have delayed. This isn't a, a one year uh, blow when we have to delay capital um, for financial reasons, like we're having to do in, in the pandemic. This is a multi-year, uh, this is something that's gonna, we're gonna feel this over multiple years. So um, I think, you know, folks need to understand that uh, and, and what they're, you know, that they still have 
you know, the, the vote on a portion of this as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the, the list is large and it's all now sitting in FY22, but it's not gonna be able to happen all in FY22 either. It just, we move it over and then it's gonna have to be, you know, figured out what we can do in each progressive year, you know, as we see how this thing unfolds. But, you know, there's a lot to getting this number down to where it is. Correct, and to the earlier point, I essentially decimated our capital budget before you even saw it. And so as part of what I'll report to you is, you know, what came to me by way of department requests and what didn't they, you know, what, what was left on the cutting room floor before the budget was even presented to you. Yeah. Unlike the school, I'm not aware that they did much of any modification to their capital plan in their, in the initial proposed budget. And I, I'm not faulting them for it, but there's a distinct difference there. Right. Yeah. And there's a little confusion on it, even by me, because then they're like, well, you approve that. What? OK. <laughs> you know, so it's a little confusing. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just want to clarify the, the library building expansion. It, it can't be bonded anymore. It needs to be appropriated is my understanding. So that, that and they reduce the S. So that's the primary reason for removing it. Um, it sure. We don't we don't have the funds to appropriate it right now or there hasn't been, uh, it, it'll be a source of discussion, I think, uh, when, when we have the count, the full council. Yeah, sure. Good point. And, and again, I did just a little clarification too on the turf field, and, and we know it's something that needs to get done. I, I think we want to buy a little bit of time. There's been some conversations about is there some way we could get some type of sponsorship or other types of revenue to help offset that cost. So that's, that's why right now we think that that work needs to be done before it comes back in time. Can you talk a little bit? Um, just because the ladder truck is, it's approved for bonding, the town, full town council will have to vote for it to actually go to referendum in about the August timeframe? Yes, you, well, you tie, you, the council needs to approve any, any ballot going to the voters. And so yeah. you approve the uh, uh, when and, and how it goes to the, to the voters. I think the expectation is it'll be in November. Uh, but this council will have the decision, it'll be sometime late August, early September, as to whether that's the appropriate timing. Um, I have given some more thought to the turf, and, and I don't mean to complicate this, but uh, essentially it already has existing budget authority in the current budget. It failed to get voter approval last November. So, you know, it's back in front of you, and I think for good reason, so you appreciate that it's still out there and consider it in the context of other needs. But I think, you know, let's, let's just be mindful in spite of the fact that you may not approve it per se through this budget. I don't think that prior approval lapses. So it's still an issue that controls, is controlled by council when and if it ever goes to the voters. And Councilor Hayes, your point's well taken. I think everyone acknowledges it, it, it's destined for a similar um, outcome unless something materially changes. And at this point, nothing's materially changed. So Tom, based on what you just said, if, if it, something were to materially change during the budget in the coming months, I, are you suggesting much like the ladder truck that it would be in the authority of the town council to put it on referendum because we have yes. that pre-existing? I, I believe that's I believe that's the case. Uh, again, something's going to have to change uh, between now and then. But I, I think if you if something does, I think the council could approve it, uh, whether it's in November or, or a future election. Again, that budget authority was granted in FY20. It doesn't lapse. It just lacks voter approval. That's the piece that's uh, holding it back at this point. Okay. It's good to know. That makes me feel a little bit better. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. So if and. I'm not saying we should do this, but let's say it's not the turf. Let's say it's a petting zoo that a former council put on the, um, uh, in the budget that failed at referendum. And then a new council says, we don't want a petting zoo. Um, it needs to come out. So how would that process work where it's not in the budget anymore? I mean, right now, the Lucifer Finance Committee is saying, we're not gonna carry this through to FY21. Um, so I guess you don't have to answer that now, but I would think that subsequent councils would have some authority over adjusting what previous councils have done. Um, perhaps. And this, in this instance, you would, if you, you simply wouldn't advance it to the voters. It would be stymied at that point. Uh, but, but prior councils' uh, uh, decisions uh, in many cases do, do prevail. Um, 
I don't know if that's a, uh, it, let me think about it further, but I think, yeah, I think to answer that would be your- good to understand because we did, we did talk about this in an earlier context this year when a number yeah. of things came in front of us that had been approved by, by final, by former council that, you know, for whatever reason, the projects had not gone forward yet. Um, and, you know, some of them, you know, it was even recommended, let's just dismiss this. It's not, you know, it's not going to happen, you know, so um, yeah, it would be good to understand sure. that because not everything gets approved or even, even funded in the year that it's put into the budget. Sure, because this requires voter approval, the real uh, control point is, uh, is the council taking additional action to place it on the ballot to the voters. And if, right. if you wish not to advance it, the best way to do that is to simply never put it on the ballot, obviously. Right. Yeah, for for my proverbial petting zoo. But if if you know if it's something different, if it falls under the charter thing, I'd be yep. like to understand it at some point. You don't have to understand it today. Yep. And of course, the, the council can always uh, um, remove budget authority, but uh, that would require additional action of council. So I think we've sufficiently complicated that matter for this morning. No, I think actually, I think, yeah. So Tom, I wonder, um, and, it, and it's a question for Betsy and John, before we move, so this includes sort of the municipal side of the equation, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Through. Do we want to divide this out and just make our recommendation on the municipal side first, or do you want to go through the rest of it? And I guess I'll defer to John and Betsy and how you want to do this. Seems to me that the municipal side is a little cleaner at this point. We kind of know the numbers, but, I, but I'll defer to you whether you want to go through the board of education budget at this point and circle back or try to get clarity on just the municipal side. You know, I, I think it probably does make sense to split it out and, and go ahead and, and try to close the door on the municipal side now and then open, start talking about the schools. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, and, you know, and this, this may be the appropriate time to bring up that, you know, I am looking to restore some money on the municipal side. Um, and so my proposal is to restore um, 150,000. And um, that would be approximately 134 or 35,000 of that would be um, for our non-union employees to get uh, their, uh, to get a, a one and a half percent COLA. Um, they're slated now to get no COLA. And the rest of it would be to uh, restore some of the per diem, the firefighter um, per diem hours. I think, you know, in the end, it's, it's just a restoration to the budget is my understanding. And if the fire department has full authority to use it how they need it, whether it's per diem, whether it's overtime or, or whatever it turns out to be. Um, but I am uh, proposing that we um, restore $150,000 back to the municipal operating budget. You want to do that in the form of a motion or should we start a motion to approve this and then amend that? How do you want to handle that, Peter? Yeah, I mean, I, I, as I was thinking in Tom, I know this has been, Betsy, it, it's, you know, thank you for bringing up the issue. I think it's something, at least I, I understand a lot of town counselors have an interest in that conversation. Um, I think there's been some conversations about whether this will be a recommendation out of the finance committee or whether this should be a conversation the night of next week when we actually have the second read. Um, Tom, do you have any insight to, to, yeah, get, to share I, I, on what your thoughts about the best way to handle that specific issue just raised by Betsy? I think it's a great conversation. We need to have it. It's just Yes, Councillor, Councillor, I very much appreciate the spirit with which this is, is offered. Um, I, I too have heard from a number of councillors beyond the Finance Committee members that have expressed a, a general interest in doing this. Um, I would recommend that you actually bring that as a separate amendment in second reading, simply for the fact that you can kind of isolate the conversation and allow your colleagues to, to lean into it and, and to talk about it. If it becomes bundled into a um, omnibus uh, uh, set of adjustments from the finance committee, I fear it might get lost or a little clunky to talk about that particular item. Uh, and I think it is worthy of its own conversation and attention. Um, so that would be my recommendation is 
by all means, bring that forward, but reserve that and allow your colleagues to have um, direct commentary on that matter individually. And I guess I would have to disagree with that because I think obviously for adding money back in where we landed on June 9th was um, at a hope, hopeful mill rate of 1.16. So you end up with the question of um, to restore this, are we going to adjust that? Or are we gonna make adjustments in other places? And presumably since we're satisfied as a committee, it sounds like, I won't speak for everyone since we haven't voted, but with the general budget that the municipal has presented, then those adjustments are gonna come from what we're asking for the school. So if we do it that night, we're gonna be faced with the same question. So, um, you know, I personally feel that it would make sense to restore it here and just explain it to the council, um, you know, that we restored that and what they can do if they want to remove it. Um, if they want to take it back down to the June 9th number, there could be an amendment to say, remove the 150. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's cleaner to do it here and then to have the discussion, you know, on this committee um, and whether or not we make a recommendation to increase that, um, to, incre to increase the, the mill rate estimate or to go forward with um, a, a school number that reflects um, a reduction of one, 150 that we're putting back on to the town side. So in my mind, it's cleaner to add it back in here. Yeah, I, I didn't appreciate that there was gonna be a uh, offsetting adjustment um, to allow that additional money. Um, well, it's a question, right? Is it, do we increase the mill rate or do we make an offsetting adjustment? It's a question because we haven't gone through, we haven't finalized that number or the recommendation on that. So that's that's still the question out there. It, it, to me, it can go either way. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, John, do you have any thoughts? Um, what would be your sort of thoughts on this, this, this specific so sort of? For this one, it, um, and I, th this was not my consensus, but it was the consensus of the council to drive towards the 1.16% mill rate change. So if we're funding an extra 150, um, as a finance committee, I think you, we have to do that through cuts. I would be supportive of doing it at the council level and possibly at least having the discussion about doing it through an increase to the mill rate. Um, so I guess I, I would... I would tend to want to handle it as a council. Well, I, I guess, John, the, the 1.16 um, did include the um, additional monies. You know, I don't want to call it for COVID, but that's the way it's been broken out. So the 1.16 did not include that. We did identify, you know, some further cuts um, on, on the town side to continue to be where we are. So, uh, you know, you know, we, we haven't gone through the school side yet and what our recommendations are at this point. And of course, they're just recommendations. The council can do anything, but, you know, I, you know, I can be the, the one loan yes vote, I guess, if that's the way it come out or Peter may vote for me. But, um, you know, I, I feel pretty strongly that I want to restore these things for the town employees. Um, and, you know, so I'd like to see it done now. Um, and then the whole council I guess could decide to take it back out. Uh, but yeah. where we land with the mill rate, I think still remains to be seen in, as a finance committee before we get to the end of this meeting. So, cause we haven't, we have the school budget that we haven't, we haven't landed on a final number. We have a presentation in front of us, but we haven't made a final decision. So, um, you know, to me, it's not a mill rate discussion right now. It's, I'm, you know, making the proposal and I'll make a motion to restore $150,000 um, to the municipal operating budget. Um, and then, you know, we can vote on that. I might suggest counselor, if you do that and you intend it to be paid for in some way, it ought to be included in the same motion. Cause what I heard from counselor Clucci is that's, that's a critical part of the analysis as to whether you support this or not. Correct, correct. And I, I, I feel like as a finance committee, our job is to come back at 1.16 now. That was the direction that the, the council gave us, I, unless we can make the case for otherwise. But I, I, I think that's kind of how, that's the, the parameters that we're trying to manage around. Uh, yeah, but, but, you know, they, they also, 
you know, it was also a, a four three vote on, you know, what was presented on June 9th, um, you know, so without additional spending. So, you know, we're, we're doing the hard work, we're identifying more. Mm. Well, I guess, Peter, I would yeah. say then, you know, let's go through the school because it sounds like um, and finalize the school and come back to this would be my request then because it sounds like we want to see where that lands and then if we're at the 1.16 or if we're not at the 1.16. Yeah, I, to be clear, I do support adding it back in. Um, that's it. In case I wasn't clear. Yeah, I mean, I think let's, let's, I mean, let's stay, you know, so I, I guess the question becomes, um, I think this is going to be a critical conversation to have. I support adding back in the Kohler so that all the town employees are sort of on a level playing field. I think a lot of the other town council members have strong viewpoints as well. I think the chair has sort of suggested he really thinks this, this should be a rich dialogue that involves all of us. Um, and, and I think, Tom, is there a way, when we do our final recommendations, we can make final recommendations to the full council about the numbers. Can we also include in there a recommendation about specific things that we carve out to have a conversation about? You can, or uh, or you as chair, or any one of you could, you know, could be the one to offer that amendment up, the further amendment up, and, and in doing so, force the conversation uh, with with counselors. So, but to answer your question, yeah, it could be, uh, you know, a, a a specific set of adjustments like what we're looking at here, and then maybe some suggestions or advisory pieces, further discussion points. Yeah. Betsy, would you would you be satisfied? I mean. I think it's a great idea. It was your idea. You brought it forward. Would you be comfortable making that motion um, at the full town council meeting that we have this dialogue? I think it's really important, but I, I'm a little concerned that there's just three of us here. I, I think this is, I think this will be a very critical discussion and the, in the core of this conversation will be less about, is it the right thing to do? Because I think there's consensus that that that's the fair thing to do. I think the more difficult conversation will be, well, how do we fund it? Is it, is it, as John has suggested, is it a mill rate conversation or is it an offset somewhere else? So um, I, are you comfortable with that, Betsy? Well, you know, kind of the way I see, you know, things potentially rolling out is, you know, there's, you know, there's restoring the COLA, um, and some of the um, per diem hours to the fire department. Um, I don't, to the fire, some dollars to the fire budget. I know they, they get to use it the way that they see fit. Um, and then the, uh, you know, the other thing I see is, you know, to John's point, um, how we've, you know, it's not calculated in the tax cap sheet, but we've not had the conversation about the senior tax credit. So um, I feel like that that conversation really needs to be had. I think we actually owe that to the ordinance committee as well. So um, I think, uh, I can't remember, but you know, we were supposed to give them a vote on that at some point, I, I don't remember. Uh, um, but uh, there's that. And then, um, you know, the one aspect that, um, you know, that I'm still considering is whether or not we want to redirect the 179 TIF money that, you know, those found in TIFs. And I have to say, I don't totally understand what part of that, so I need to do some work with Tom to help me craft that, that particular um, motion, but to redirect that, you know, to the general fund just for this year. Um, so, uh, you know, and then other counselors could have other things that they're, they're looking at, um, you know, certainly these could be brought forward, you know, as, as separate motions. Uh, it starts to get tricky because then we're going to all be having our calculators out and doing, you know, calculations on, on the fly. Um, so, uh, you know, I think maybe if, if um, at least for me personally, if, um, if, if I'm able to work with Tom to work up what those numbers look like so that that can be presented in a, a clear way to um, counselors so that it's not such a big question and so that the public can take a look at it ahead of time, you know, and what the impact is, then um, I, I would be okay with, with doing it that way. Um, you know, as a, as a fairly new counselor, 
um, I look back at past councils and, you know, I see some rock, rock, you know, some meetings that really get rip roaring. So, you know, uh, n nobody ever wants that, but I suppose it, it can go in that direction. Um, but I know we all, you know, as you know, it's a courtesy, we try to keep them as, as uh, focused as possible. So um, if, if, if you think that, you know, we can do that in an orderly fashion as best as possible, then, uh, you know, I'm okay with that. I, I just, you know, I usually agree with many of the things that Councillor Clucci says. In this case, I, I disagree because we've made a lot of changes since that June 9th. So to say that we wouldn't be coming in at whatever we were told to do from June 9th, I don't think is accurate. June 16th, we had a, we had information that was brand new put on our plate um, at the beginning of the meeting, which was a $105,000 bond premium and you know some other some other information and that's the nature of the beast this year so that's absolutely zero crit criticism to anybody but um that's kind of the way it's been going it's been it's been changing you know almost on a daily basis so i'm okay with it as long as we can do it in an orderly fashion and if john you and peter think that we can do that in an orderly fashion um and and i'm not open to criticism for not doing it in an orderly fashion then i'm okay with it it, let me let me take a step. So I think there was a lot packed into there. Um, so as specifically as it relates, and I, I'd be curious where it is just on the issue of, I, I think there's two that we were talking about, particularly, you've got about 150,000 year request in that we consider to add, add back in. I think there's merit to that. I think a lot of the town councils think there's merit. I know there's a lot of merit, a lot of agreement on the COLA. I don't know, I haven't had any conversations about the, the fire per diem. So I think those things can be packed in and handled. And I think if we're willing, we should make a recommendation as a finance committee that that is something that should be advanced on the full floor next week. Um, as far as the senior tax credit, I had anticipated we would address the senior tax credit here, at least include it in our recommendations. It certainly can be put on the floor in a motion next week if somebody wants. Okay. Um, as far as the TIF, we really haven't had conversations around TIFs, so I, I don't know how to quite structure that. So let's let's first just deal, I think the issue at hand, and I think what I'd like to do is, is deal with the two things we know about, which is the COLA adjustment you're requesting, and I think that has a ton of merit, and I think there's tons of support. It's just how we fund it. Um, and it's the senior tax credit. So John, are you to answer Betsy's question, are you comfortable with bringing to the full council a recommendation that we discuss this polar adjustment as a full body? Yeah, so um, with the senior, sorry, I'll answer your first question first. Um, with the senior property tax relief, I believe we rescheduled second reading to coincide of, of that ordinance amendment to coincide with the second reading of the budget was yes. my recollection. So I, yeah. I anticipate that's going to be on our agenda anyways. Um, yeah, I, I can't remember how that was supposed to work. So thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, but John, I guess I'm sorry to interrupt. I think, I think what my thought was, I think that's something the finance committee might want to make a recommendation on just whether yeah. it's in or out. But yes, so I think that does need to be discussed that same evening. I, uh, okay. So it, it, do you want to talk about senior property tax relief or uh, the COLA first? Let's talk about how we, you know, Betsy's made a request, a motion that we deal with the COLA here. Yeah. Well, I, it's COLA and a slight increase back to the fire yeah. budget. Yeah. So, so Betsy, I, I would be okay, actually. So what I'm looking at is our overall operating budgets for the municipality, uh, which is going up about 0.8% where we stand today. Um, and the education is going up 3.1%. So that's the inequity that I'm looking at and adding something back on, uh, you know, 150 for COLA, I'd want to factor, you know, where's that, where do we end up after that? Um, what's that? 1.1. I did the calculation 1.1%. So we would go up to 1.1. Okay. Yeah. And all right. So, I mean, that gets us in the right direction. I would support adding it. But there might be some other adjustments that aren't necessarily in the same order of magnitude, I think, to, to get to equity between the municipal side and the education side. Uh, 
So I, I don't know that I'm prepared to do all of those. I, I would support adding the 150 back in, um, but I, I think other counselors also want to be able to weigh in on that one. If I could, I would highly recommend, and hopefully Peter will, will agree with this, um, having gone through almost 30 of these through <laughs> multiple communities, uh, the less moving parts and unknowns going into a budget meeting for your final decision, the better. And I say that just because um, you can attest, even at the committee level, this stuff is confusing. Add four more voices to the conversation that have not, don't have the level of detail uh, that the three of you do, it really gets complicated. So my, my recommendation is to provide them with a clear and concise recommendation from you as a committee, which I think we've got the, certainly the framework, if not 98% of it right in front of you here. Uh, and then undoubtedly there may be additional amendments. I would highly recommend not just to you three, but all seven members of council be very selective and careful about what additional amendments you bring. It has been the tradition as a courtesy to reduce any amendment you intend to writing. So your colleagues have the courtesy of knowing it's coming. And in this context, uh, it sounds like Councillor Gleistein might be very willing and eager to offer that amendment. That amendment ought to reflect what our intentions are. If, if it includes a component of how to pay for it, then the amendment ought to indicate that. And then you as a body can consider that on its merits, debate it, discuss it, and vote on it. So the, the discussion needs to be postured. And the best way to posture it is by way of uh, a fully developed amendment that explains what it is and, and uh, how it's being paid for. Does that make sense? And I'm, I'm pleased to work with whomever wants to offer that amendment so we, we prepare it in advance and you can share it out um, with your colleagues. Yeah, Peter, I guess I just, I kind of have to uh, disagree with a little bit with that characterization because, um, you know, <laughs> we're still in the development of the budget, unfortunately. And, you know, so, no, I, Councilor, I, you're not. You are in the 11th hour. Midnight is going to strike. I mean, uh, and with all due respect, um, and right. I guess you're not appreciating my experience and my advice here, but what this can get ugly quickly and very confusing, and I'm trying to protect you from that. Well, our meeting isn't over today, so we haven't looked at everything yet, but you know, I think my proposal at this point is pretty simple, which is to restore $150,000 to the municipal operating budget. I think that's pretty simple. That's all I'm proposing at this point. I haven't made any kind of proposals on the rest of what we're going to look at today. So it's the same way I might have said, you know, I want to propose a cut to this or I want to take this out of capital. I'm proposing to restore 150,000 back to this. Um, uh, if there's a second, and my simple point is if there's a second half to it, I think you should for full disclosure and for honest debate and discussion and informed voting, that ought to be part of the proposal, not just half of it. Right, so that's what I'm saying. Why don't we move on and talk about the other half? I'm, 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 I'm happy to do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I mean, here's part of my concern, I guess, and I, the kind of, we're an hour in, you know, we need to be able to walk away today with something we're going to send council. Um, I suspect this conversation about, I, I think adding back in is the easy part of the, the equation. The really difficult part of the equation is, is it an increase to the mill rate or is it an offset somewhere else? And um, I, I think instead of having it in two places, I think that's going to be something that we should wait. So my recommendation is that we, we recommend that this is a motion that's considered the night of the second read. We can table that particular thing to the end of this meeting. What I'd like to be able to do at this point is try to, I think we're close to be able to agree other than that one item where we are in the initial budget. I just like to get that one landed. So I think the only thing that remains to be discussed on the, on the municipal budget is do we want to right now the senior tax credit, at least as this has been developed and flowed, the increase is not reflected in these numbers. If these are going to be our recommended numbers, um, it won't 
have the senior tax credit in it, the increase in the senior tax credit, if we're okay with that. And I guess my proposal would be, I think, and, and as already been pointed out by Gus Kluge, is, is that that's also gonna be in our agenda item the 24th to talk about that. So those would be two items that I think it'd be more efficient to have the full council weigh in on and, and try to get to some consensus. So with that, and what we've been through on the municipal side, um, and Betsy, I, I know where we are, we'll, we'll table just for a second with, with a caveat about, we'll, we'll circle back to adding back the COLA. But in general, can we, are you guys okay with the, with the, with the town budget as it exists, except for those two items that we just left? Yeah, except, except for those two items. And the, uh, the, the senior property tax credit, uh, you know, it was approved at first reading, but I, I suspect Tom feels there's a consensus of the council to not fund the increase. So it's not, not in the budget right now. Um, Larissa, if you could just scroll to the last page, uh, just of this display, just so you can see how it's postured. There you go, stop right there. So again, the budget currently sits at 263, which includes the additional 58,000. And the numbers that I'm presenting to you here remove that, that expansion of 58,000. Right. So are, are you looking to, to vote as a finance committee, whether we support that reduction or just allow the council to vote when they take the matter up next week? I guess what I'm testing both Betsy, both of you is to say, are you okay with these numbers as presented today for the town municipal budget, which at this point would not include that increase in the senior tax credit with the understanding that that is gonna be something we're gonna to have to talk about as a full council at the second read. So it's not, we're not, we're recommending to accept these numbers for now. If we wanna add it back, and if we wanna add back COLA, those are two things that are gonna have an impact on funding in some manner. So we're gonna to have to deal with it um, as a full body. Does that answer your question, John, or did I confuse you? Uh, well, it's confusing. Uh, I'm just trying to think through the sequence. So we may have an on-the-fly change to the budget order based on the, the vote on the resident property tax relief. Um, well, my, my hope we, we might for the COLA as well. So, my um, hope What is your sage advice on how, to, how, to, how do you navigate us through these? But, yeah, my hope would be that, uh, and it's customary, that uh, Peter would be recognized as chair of finance to offer up this, you know, whatever amendment set of adjustments you come to uh, today, the council consider that as the first amendment. And in most cases, they adopt that as kind of a starting point. They get you almost to the end. Then if there are issues you want to go back to or, or modify further, further amendments are then, then in order. And that's what I was referring to. We could prepare um, amendments for both those items and counselors could offer them up to make sure that there's specific discussion around those items. But I think that's clean, reasonable. It's cleanest if they if if the full council will adopt your recommendation as proposed, and then work from there. That gets you ninety nine percent there, or something like that. Yeah, it, and when this was presented to the full council, to where the consensus was to hit the one point one six, this was already removed from uh, the figure at that time as well. I believe. I believe you're correct. Yes. So I I think that's reasonable, Peter. To, yeah, to I think that. that because that was already in the, the 1.16 discussion, that's 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 good. So can we have a motion to accept the municipal budget as presented today with the understanding that there's probably going to be those two amendments that Tom is referencing that that any one any counselor can can work with Tom in the intervening period of time to get it flushed out? Well, I'll, I'll motion to accept the municipal adjustments as um, presented by the town manager. You know, I thought just a second ago we said we were going to finish off because I think people are are have rightly asked, you know, where I'm thinking I would pay for the 150, and it's clearly, you know, it's not a mystery here. It's going to come from the school side in what I'm proposing, so I think it might be of help to take a look at that. Yeah, I, Betsy, I, I think what we're trying to do is 
we know there's the, there's those two outstanding issues. I, I think that's the con that will be the heart of the conversation if there's a motion introduced. And I think the motion, I think Tom was pretty clear about the motion that needs to be introduced is, you know, what the how, how much money and how it, it's either going to be you know, operational budget increase, or it's going to be offset by revenue somewhere else or expenses somewhere else. So I, I, I know you want to get, but but I'm what I'm trying to do is I we're an hour in. I'm trying to move through this. So Tom's trying to get out the documents today, right, Tom? Yes. Yes. So, so I offered a motion, but there hasn't been a second. Yeah. I'll, I'll second the motion. Um, and I guess just Colette, maybe take a roll call on, on the motion, which is yes. to roll call on the motion, Councillor Hayes. Yes. Councillor Gleistein. No. Councillor Clucci. Yes. Okay. So that, that, and Betsy, I, I think there's tremendous support for what you're suggesting. I just think if you can work with Tom on that, um, and we will have that conversation the night of the second week. I, I think we probably, we probably were gonna have the conversation anyway. I, you know, where I'm differing with you guys is what makes it smoother. I hear what Tom is saying, you know, and and I do highly respect his opinion. Um, I don't, I, I think this is gonna have the opposite effect. I think it's gonna make it worse. So I'm, I'm just, you know, looking at this from my personal standpoint of, I think a recommendation coming from this council, if everyone agreed to it, to have the 150 in there, um, then there were, would be discussions, you know, further about what, you know, the final school budget and what the final mill rate is and all that, you know, and they could, they could, uh, you know, they could also take our recommendation and say, no, we don't want to put the 150 in. So, you know, my, uh, but no vote is because I personally think putting the 150 back in, if the two counselors that are in the finance committee are for that, um, is cleaner because what we're doing is we're making our recommendation. So, you know, we're saying this is our recommendation. Both of you have said you're for the 150, I think. Um, no. I think Don did. And so to me, that's our recommendation. So, you know, put it back in. It's one line item for Tom. It, you know, it's increasing the, um, the municipal bottom line to, you know, top line by 150, you know. So anyway, that's, you know, that's, that's why I voted no, because I think it's, it's cleaner to put, um, the way that I've proposed it today, but, you know, people yeah. disagree. No, we hear you. Um, okay, Tom, so maybe work us through now the, but Tom? Yeah, okay. Um, Marissa, go back up, I, you know, just to recap, go back to the second page, I guess. Um, second page. There you go. So just to recap on the uh, education operating budget, that's the reduction of 70,650. Again, uh, I think Ruth's explained why that number is slightly different, but yep. uh, that was a number identified by the uh, school board finance committee itself. And we've just carried that forward. And again, we've made a further adjustment that they directed for adult ed, uh, that 3630. So fairly small changes on the school operating side and uh, adult ed. So now if we can turn to school capital, which was the subject of a lot of discussion earlier this week. Um, go ahead to the next one, right there. So the top portion is what we just dealt with, municipal capital. Uh, the bottom portion is school capital. Um, my recommendation included a, a series, uh, you know, accepting some school board directed changes on capital to be appropriated, capital projects to be appropriated. Uh, those total 67,100. 67, and then I kind of rounded that number up to 150 um, in terms of uh, total reduction of appropriated capital items. And beyond that, there was also a switch from an appropriated item. This is the municipal school technology refresh uh, to switch it from appropriations to bond. And then finally, again, from the school's uh, finance committee, they proposed uh, removing, if you will, $757,000 in capital projects to be bonded. And if it pleases you, we do have a, uh, a detail that uh, goes, you know, reflects these details. 
keep going. Yeah. Next one. So uh, the format, the format will be somewhat familiar to you. Um, although we did sort things by appropriation and bonding before they were kind of blended. And I don't know about you, but that was confusing to me. So what you're looking at here reflects the actual changes that are shown in aggregate on that cover page we just reviewed. Um, so the, the far right hand column shows the current status. And I will uh, just point out for your benefit, uh, Larissa, do you see 31.9 and 50,000 on the town council first reading column? They're near the bottom on appropriations right there. Those two items, uh, I may be accused of, of being too specific on the school budget side, but those are the things you'll see I've zeroed out that, uh, that roughly total that extra 82, 81, $82,000 yeah. or so. Yeah. Uh, and quite frankly, I thought the Board of Education um, would have accepted those last night. Uh, to my surprise, they did not. So. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how specific we want to be in terms of which projects stay in, which go out. Uh, but it's certainly you have control over the bottom line and, and that bottom line does reflect, um, you know, that total reduction of essentially one, it's 149 rather than 150 from appropriated items. And then down below on bonded items, uh, that reflects uh, the school board's directive of removing fire 757 that's in those three projects, uh, the 250, the 392, and then reduction of one bus. Um, the combination of those three items is 757. And then the highlighted one is the one that you've switched to bond, 150. Yeah, um, just, just a question on the, I thought the STEM lab, it's the 392, plus there was 250 for the garage. Mm -hmm. And then I thought there was a number for the furnishings of the STEM lab. Is that in the 757? I thought there was a separate line item for the furnishings for the STEM lab. But if you're taking the STEM lab out, the furnishings should go with it. I don't, I can't answer that necessarily. Other than that, uh, these descriptions and these uh, yeah. capital projects uh, is what we got from the school. We didn't create them or, or recharacterize them. Yeah. So I think it may have been wrapped into that number, Peter, not a separate line. Okay. So the only question I have for, for and I, I've really struggled with it, and I think it should be a conversation. Tom, maybe you can take us through a little bit, the tech refresh, which are for laptop computers, mostly. I think it's a bit more than that. There may be some network systems yeah. and uh, modems and such, but it, it's all, fairly durable goods. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, items that are, are, are not, don't have tremendous longevity per se, probably three to five years uh, in most cases in terms of the useful life. Yeah. And we had tried, we've tried to have a policy for items like that instead of being bonded and you borrow money for it are more routine. We, we have these expenses every year. We had tried to We've really, the, the finance committee in the past has worked on what do we appropriate, what do we bond, we're trying to have guidelines. We had originally started off with this being in appropriations. Mm -hmm. That's where we think it probably is where it should be. We have moved it over to bonding. I have, I just want to come back and readdress that. I think I'm more comfortable with that remaining in appropriations rather than bonding. Um, so I will defer to my colleagues on what their thoughts are. Um, that does have an impact on operational budgets. Um, so John and Betsy, I'd just be curious about, is that more uh, an appropriated item? Or is that more of something that we should bond? So from my perspective, I think it's something that should be appropriated um, <clears throat> because it's a short-term thing. So. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know the exact lifespan of, of our computers, probably three to five years. So um, I, I think it makes sense to appropriate something like that. In terms of the impact, though, um, I think from the school's perspective, they just care that it's funded, right? That they have the authority to spend the money, whether it's appropriations or bonding. I don't know that it really makes a difference um, to them. But if we do shift it to appropriations, it would have a bottom line impact. Right, right, right. Just to be clear, though, 
though it would be financed, we would not finance it more than three years uh, in recognition of what it is and its longevity. Uh, if that helps and help, helps the conversation. Also, if I could interject quickly, uh, the reason they wanted to swap it over from appropriation to bond was because they anticipate receiving some monies from the state but they just don't know how much. And because they don't know how much, um, and they won't know until January. So I think that's why they wanted to put it towards the bond because then some of it could be funded from the state's revenues and some could be funded from the bonds as needed. But won't, wouldn't, we get, wouldn't we get the revenues? It should be in, the state should be indifferent whether it's appropriated or bonded. Well, no, the state won't care, but in terms of, uh, we don't know how much to anticipate for our revenue. So, the, Peter, the, the difference state. is we'd be raising money that we may not need. Correct. Right. Yeah, so that, that's kind of where I'm at. I, I, I think that, um, you know, I'm definitely not for bonding it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I realize it, it might be a scramble um, to, you know, and this isn't the only tech refresh. This is just middle school tech refresh. So, I believe there's the town funds tech refresh for uh, a, a big portion. Well, they, they fund, you get a little bit back from the state for tech um, based on state mandates, but then um, I don't have the number in front of me, but I know someone mentioned at least 150 for the high school. So there is there is money in, I don't know the total number for tech, tech refresh. Um, it might take some creativity and then, you know, uh, you know hopefully people will contact their state <laughs> reps and we will get the money that we're you know anticipating so i you know to me um there's so many unknowns um you know for for what's going to happen next year and um this is just one more one more unknown uh as far as i understand it the middle school is the only mandate so uh you know there might be some technical reports that could be run you know, I know, you know, where I work, they do them all the time, you know, what, what devices are actually active, which ones are not active. Um, you know, there, there may be kids who don't, who don't really who use their own laptop a lot more. And so, um, you know, maybe there can be a new policy, you know, where, where uh, you can opt out for, for a year or something, if you want to, with a, 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 a pool of spares or something like that. So, um, yeah, I, I, no, I'm not for putting it in appropriations or bonding. Um, I don't think it was in there. I think this was added towards the end was my understanding. Wasn't this added after June 9th? Is that correct? Uh, I believe it's been a capital project since uh, proposal, since the proposed budget. Okay. The only, the, the only change. And your appropriation. It so. was appro It was appropriated. It okay, was gotcha. an appropriated item. And it wasn't until this week it's that Tom. Bonding. Okay. Tom suggested that we could move it from appropriations to bonding. So I think if I heard it right, and maybe we, you know, I, I think John thinks it's more appropriate being an appropriations. I think it's more appropriate being an appropriation. I, uh, I'm backtracking. Oh, you're backtracking. Okay. Yeah, Ruth changed my mind and I'll try to explain it, I guess. So if we appropriate this money, we're going to charge the taxpayers for it this year right now. And given that there's uh, the potential to collect money from the state, we don't necessarily need to do this. If we just tag it as bonded, then they have the authority to spend that money. And if we need to raise the funds that you know, to make up for the gap that doesn't come from the state, we could bond it. Um, so I, I, it makes a lot of sense to me now. I wasn't seeing that nuance, I guess, before Ruth uh, explained it. So I, I do support keeping it as a bonded item right now. Then why would we do that every year? Because I'm assuming that's kind of the case every year, right? You don't know exactly till a certain point when you're going to get the money. We would have to invite someone in from the school side. I'm not familiar that there's uh, uh, any consistent state money to support technology. This is something unique, I think. It's not a consistent Maybe program. The call if, if we want to get to I think Kay Bolton could certainly answer that question quickly. Yeah, John. I, it, before we get to it, but John, I mean, there's there's two ways. It doesn't. It doesn't. We don't necessarily have to collect the money from taxpayers if it's back in appropriations. Then it's back in their operational budget, and they can find ways to. It's still in the capital budget, Peter. It's well, it's still it's still in the capital budget, but it it the the capital budget if it's a it's an appropriated item goes down into the net request from the taxpayer. So. 
I mean, it, it, what it would in effect do if we hold the line, whatever the net request is right now as presented this week, um, it would reduce it would it would reduce the net request from taxpayers if we held the line. So that's that's where you're right. If if we pass it all on, we're raising money. Another alternative is you make it budget neutral. Yeah, I think we would need a separate action to reduce the operating budget for the schools by an equal amount or an offsetting amount if you wanted it to be tax neutral. Right, but I, I was just suggesting there's that could be a mechanism. So I'm just more focused on this will be an issue always going forward that the finance committee had tried to say all these tech refreshes should be just ongoing operational expenses of the school because we know we have them rather than keep borrowing money for them and bonding them, it belongs in the, you know, yes, it's a capital budget, but it's, it should be funded every year from operations. Was where the finance community, and Tom, you've got, you've got the history of those conversations. That's where we were trying to go with a lot of these things. It's just, we, last year we ended up, and we got killed for it. We ended up moving a whole bunch of stuff from appropriations to bonding to be able to get to the numbers. We have a longstanding aspiration in that regard I, i'm afraid we don't have a terribly good track record of actually converting that to yeah. that system following our policy i know right so i guess on this item um so i guess just you know maybe it sounds like betsy where are you on it yes no bonded or appropriated well um i guess i have a, a question and it kind of goes to what you're saying what don what um what john is saying so because this is considered, you know, it's on this screen. So, so the school makes, tells us what they want, and then we make the final decisions on this screen, everything on this screen, or just the bottom part of this screen? Depends who you ask. Um, certainly you have bottom line authority. Um, Capital. Uh, I mean, oh, I'm sorry, Tom. So yes, sir. I mean, certainly the council has bottom line authority. It's it's questionable or arguable as to whether on the capital side you actually have authority to kind of line item things. Um, historically, we haven't seen the need to dive that deep. This year, we we are for whatever reason. Um, so I, you know. Yeah. So I guess I would see it removed from uh, the bonded. Uh, so. Five one five four four one nine seven and not added back in to the uh, the three nineteen oh one five. That's where I would be. The only thing I would say is um, just generally about this need. To the council's point earlier, we don't know what the future holds. Uh, distance learning may well be a uh, critical component again in the fall, at least in some capacity. So having adequate technology strikes me as a pretty important feature. So one way or another, I, I, I totally I, agree with you, Tom. I, I think you just said that we're like, we need to focus on the bottom line of each category. So I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to weigh in on, I probably went beyond what I even should have for saying, you know, we are looking at individual line items, but um, you know, so for bottom line, I guess, you know, something else, like there's an HVAC repair that's 150, I'm sure it's needed. So I'm not even looking at that, but that's, I'm using that as a number because there's another 150 in there. So I guess at this point, you know, I'm proposing to, you know, reduce the line that we're seeing at the bottom, the 1544197 by 150. Okay. Well, I think that's what you're proposing, Peter. No, I mean, I, I guess, I guess where I am, and, and, and it, isn't, it isn't a line item that I'm talking about. And I think to get to the heart of your question, the, the, the Board of Education comes up for their capital request, whether it's appropriated or bonded is something that, what Tom, your team determines as you go through the capital projects? Yeah, Ruth does. So I mean, we have a policy in place. So they're not, they're not saying that's not an appropriate line item. They're just saying by policy to be consistent across the town this is normally an appropriated item or, or a bonded item. And, and so at this point, the only issue I was raising is it has carried in the budget to this date as an appropriated item. 
Tom put on the table the possibility of moving it to a bonded item. So I'm not questioning whether we need the laptops or we should be doing the laptops. I'm just questioning is it an appropriated item or a bonded item? And then that has consequences as we've discussed. I understand the rationale about there can be funding for it, but like everything else, like the 400,000 that they have in surplus, if in the COVID, we're gonna get money for COVID. No one knows how much money we're gonna get for COVID and what we're just making the assumption that if we get some money for COVID, that will help to go offset those expenses that there will, that should generate, if it covers costs, that should generate a surplus the Board of Education is going to have available next year that they're going to be able to use to supplement their budget. Just like if they get funding for these laptops, it doesn't matter if it's appropriated or bonded, if they do get funding, that's going to be money that becomes available that will go into surplus. And they are concerned. We've carried much higher surpluses in the past. And Tom, that surplus now is locked and loaded at 400, if you think. I mean, they've tapped into almost all of their surplus, right? The school? Yeah. To my knowledge, there's uh, something in order of 400 yeah. still not uh, provide, you know, uh, right. utilized in the FY21 budget. Right, but they've carried higher reserves in the past, right? Mm. Anyway. I don't, I don't have a budget warrant in front of me, Peter, so I, I think we're saying the same thing. So the, the, the next to the bottom line, I mean, is it going to come across as um, on the budget warrant, um, it doesn't break it out as appropriation or capital. So you're saying on the bottom line, you want to keep the appropriation, at least to the discussion so far of 1863212. And that's the way it's going to appear on the budget warrant. The, I don't know. I don't know about the budget. All I'm suggesting, it's not going to change the bottom line of the total finance committee recommendations for capital. It doesn't change what we're recommending that they do for capital. Right. It would change the mill rate, though. That that we unless we, unless we take some other action. Yes. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And that that is the issue. We've got two choices. We either say uh, this isn't about at this point. It's not about the mill rate. It's about is it an appropriate item to be bonded or is it an appropriate item to be appropriated by our policy? And if it should be appropriated then that's the way it should be. Then we can have a conversation. Does the bottom line net request increase by the 150? Or do we say they need to find that somewhere else in their budget? Okay, gotcha. And I'm, I'm kind of in the court of saying it should be appropriated. And I would recommend that they find it somewhere else in their budget if, if they need to do it. I think there's still things in in appropriated capital that could be, they've got choices to make about where they want to spend their, their appropriated capital dollars. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's a motion. It's probably not at this point, but. Well, then that's if you make that motion and then we'll, we'll see where it goes. Uh, so, I mean, <laughs> this was appropriated until the 16th. I just want to make sure I understand that, right? It was it's Tom. always been appropriate. We didn't Tom, take Tom, Tom moved it. So correct. Oh, we didn't take any action. Motion, so it's still yeah. To reject the town manager's recommendation that we bond the middle school focused tech refresh. Um, say that again. So I make a motion that we reject the town manager's recommendation to bond the middle school focused tech refresh. And it's appropriate, just, okay. It would go back to appropriations then. Go back to appropriations. It was before, yeah. I, do you want to add to the second part of that, that, that how are we going to address whether it's a mill rate impact or a, or not? Uh, well, I think we still haven't, we're going to have that conversation after this. So should we just have that conversation now and then, you know? Well, we can certainly, we, we can do that. So maybe we just stick with the motion that, that, that you made. I'll, I'll second the motion. Okay. What, what do you think? I mean, as far as you have to take a roll call, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Councilor Hayes. Yes. 
Councillor Clucci. No. Excuse me, John. No, sorry. Okay, Councillor Gleistein. Yes. Motion passed. So what that will do is uh, it will reduce the one five four four one nine seven by one fifty and increase the three one nine zero five zero one five by one fifty. Yep. Just so you appreciate it also has an effect on uh, capital revenues uh, by a similar amount. Um, you know, in terms of how I've presented it here, we've, we've carried in as a bonded item, uh, the revenue to offset it comes from bonds. Don't concern yourself with it, but it's going to have a similar effect, uh, downward effect on capital revenue for school. Yeah, but it just, I mean, at the end of the day, the net tax request, it just all washes out, right? For the most part? Not unless you do a separate action. Right, unless you find a way to pay for it, otherwise. Well, right, that, that, that we're gonna have that conversation yeah. okay. next or at the end of the school. So does that take care of all the adjustments on the school? I believe so, yes. So I guess then that comes the second part of the, the question is how do we fund the, the new appropriate or putting it back into appropriations? Um, you know, I think I'm of the court that it, it doesn't increase the mill rate um, that needs to come from some other operational or capital line um, in the Board of Education's budget. I don't know where you are, Betsy and John, but that's, that's where I would be. Professor, can you just scroll back up to page two? There we go, stop right there. Um, yes. So Peter, wh what I think I hear you saying is that, or what I guess I would suggest for simplicity is to modify the number of the top right number, 52,997,423. Yeah. That's the total of the operating budget for education. What I think I, your motion or your suggestion is would be to reduce that by 150. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, I guess that wouldn't quite be my recommendation. Um, I would still uh, reduce the um, the, the the total capital um, by a hundred thousand. I can you. How does a hundred work into your? What are your thoughts on on that? Um. Well, so we're at. Uh, we're at 1.86321 um, uh, and that puts us at a, um, so if we reduced, that's a 82% increase over what was requested last year. If we were to reduce the capital request by, um, I'm sorry, the calculation I did was to reduce it by one, uh, oh yeah, by 100, that'll be a 25% increase over FY20. Um, so, I mean, as you said, I think we try to, we only focus on the bottom line. Um, I kind of know, I kind of have maybe ideas where, where I would focus, but um, I think a 25% increase, um, oh, oh, that that would be an 82% increase in, um, I should say in, in, the, in the top line, you know, it, it sort of gets, mixed up here with appropriation, but um, I guess that I would, you know, I think we have to talk appropriation now because we're talking mill rate, but I would propose that it be reduced by 100,000. I'm sorry, I haven't said this very well at all, but um, the appropriation 219.015 would represent a 25% increase over FY20. There is a, a motion um it lacks a second at this point. So I, I'm just, I wanna make sure we're not adding a secondary motion. Uh, is, is there a second to Peter's original motion? 
What was the motion? I'm sorry. It's to reduce the school operating budget by $150,000. Oh. Um, yeah, I guess I, 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 um, Yeah, I'll second the motion so we can. Okay, thank you. So now it's worthy of discussion. Right, yeah, sorry about that. So I, I've kind of weighed in, John John and Betsy, any discussion? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, to me, this is just an offset to the, uh, the bond versus appropriate. So I'm still in the camp that it was better off being bonded um, for this particular situation. Okay, but I think well, Mike, I think the process is our recommendation at least, I mean, this doesn't mean, again, this, this will be discussed by the full council, but I think we already had the motion and it was accepted to move it from bonding to appropriation. So I think that's that's been sort of done. Now we're having the, net, the, the motion that's now on the floor. It, I, and I think, John, it comes down to, do you increase the operational budget by 150,000 or do you reduce it? And the motion is to reduce it. I, I suspect what you might be saying is you'd be in the position that you would increase the operational budget. No, I wouldn't touch the operational budget. I, I would take it in the capital. Um, so I, I guess with this motion, I'm a no as well as if, if that wasn't clear. Yeah, and I think, you know, what I'm proposing is that um, this, uh, the operational budget be decreased by 50,000. You've proposed 150,000. Um, if we decrease it by 50,000, 50, that gets us to about a little less than a 3% increase in the education gross budget, not including, um, you know, the, the pandemic costs. So um, at, that gets us close to about 3%. So I'm not making a new motion here, but I'm explaining, you know, why and what I might propose in a next motion would be to reduce the operating budget by um, one uh, by fifty thousand and reduce the capital budget by a hundred thousand. So I think the first motion was to take it out of bonding, and the second motion, you know, and I think the way I understood you were saying, Peter, it all comes out the same on the bottom line with the uh, mill rate, but I guess. My question back to you is, do we need to definitely say that, reduce the operating budget by that? Or can we say we wanna reduce the uh, operating by 50 and the capital by 100 and, and we're still at the 1.16? I think what, well, Tom, maybe you can help. I, I, think, I think what we're trying, the motion on the table is to say the net request that we're gonna fund through the taxpayer and the mill rate on the school side gets reduced now by the 150,000 that we have moved from bonding back to appropriations. Um, but Peter, more, more specifically, your motion had this top right-hand number, 52,997,423 being reduced by 150 to offset that additional expense yeah. in capital now. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I would suggest you call the vote on that just just so we can understand where things are and if there's a yeah. subsequent motion to come forward uh, by all means. Yeah. So I guess that collect. Certainly. Maybe can, I Councilor Hayes. can I make an amendment to the motion? I might suggest you, it's cleaner if you just let this be defeated and, yeah. and offer your own clean one. I'd like to make an amendment to the motion. Well, I, I think what Tom's saying then vote no on this one and then you can offer your your amendment right but i i do have a right to offer the amendment right you do yes. yeah yeah trying to help okay, yeah. Let's, so finish you... with, let's finish with the vote on the motion on the table please and i would say councillor hayes yes Councilor clucci no i'd like Councilor to make Councilor an Glystein. i'd like to make an amendment to the motion on the table Wait, Betsy, I, I think I think what we're saying is if you vote. I, I understand what's being said. I I think Colette and Tom called for the vote. I mean, if yeah. you call for the vote, Peter, then you can call for the vote. But I guess I'm not understanding. I asked to make an amendment. 
I, I know, I, Betsy, I, I think what we're trying to say procedurally, if you don't want this motion, John's voted no. If you voted, if you vote no, you then can propose an amendment that you want a motion that you want us to consider. So we're not saying you can't, we're just saying you need to kill this that's on the table and then bring forth what you want us to consider. Right. I, I not to shut I, you down. We're just I, trying to say. Yeah, I do fully, I fully understand that. Okay. I just want to be clear. I fully understand that. I, I don't okay. want to lose the intent of this motion. That's why I was offering to amend it. Um, I don't want to lose the intent of this motion. So the amendment was important to me, um, not, not just to vote this down and then bring my own amendment, but um, I'll vote yes for this then. And then I'll bring another, no, no, another motion. No, no, Betsy, I think, I think procedurally, if you vote yes, and I vote yes, then, then this, this, this stands. If you vote no, you could come I'm, back with your I'm voting, motion. I'm voting we can yes. have... Glad I believe I heard uh, Councillor Gleistein voting yes. So, thank you. The motion passes. Okay. Do you so, ever propose a motion? Okay. Propose a motion. I'd like to propose a motion to reduce the um, school capital budget by fifty thousand dollars. that so this is where i um sorry not to interrupt the motion but with the capital programs i believe they do need to be line itemed because that's how they're tracked and funded they're not necessarily funded in one particular year i think you need to be specific am i misinterpreting that tom or ruth i, I think that level of clarity would be helpful for all involved yes okay sure I have to get to that page. I, Larissa, it'd probably be helpful. I'd to like go. to reduce the um, laptop appropriation for uh, refresh of middle school laptops by fifty thousand dollars. Okay, I'll second it for a conversation or discussion. Yeah, so where I'm at is, um, you know, I, I wasn't comfortable taking it out of, you know, all, all the 150 out of the um, operating budget, but, um, you know, not being able to amend that, I also wasn't, wasn't comfortable with getting to a point where, you know, maybe nothing would be reduced because I do feel that we need to account for this somehow. So, um, you know, this uh, is, is more in line with where I think, um, you know, it would be appropriate for for spending to go. So let me just try to bring some clarity. So we have sort of worked through the process by which the, the tech refresh will be appropriated, not bonded. Um, and you're suggesting that you want that number now to go from 150 to 100, right? Correct. You know, based on what Councillor Clucci is saying, the, you know, in the end, the town council um, needs to line item all the items here. I yep. kind of understood that we we're focused on the bottom line. So I apologize for that. I thought I was, you know, told focus on the bottom line here, but um, I'm happy to say, you know, what I think should and shouldn't be funded and how it should and shouldn't be funded. Um, you know, I have, you know, uh, you know, plan to bring forth uh, an increase of $150,000 to the town council that it sounds like a lot of town councilors are um, inclined to, uh, uh, you know, at least consider um, for re restoring the colas um, and some fire firefighter funding on uh, the town side. And so, you know, this, this still leaves a hundred thousand gap for that. Um, but uh, by reducing a little bit more out of the capital appropriation um, to the school, we're, you know, we're getting closer on that. John, any, 
So it's been seconded. It's open for discussion. Any any thoughts? Uh, I don't know how much the middle school tech refresh is going to cost. It, 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 to me, the 150 is a, the best estimate that I have. Um, I assume that there's some diligence that went into that number. So I don't, I, I guess I, I don't support arbitrarily cutting it. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't fully appreciate what the impact would be because they're still going to have, uh, well, I guess the impact would be you're going to reduce the capital program by 50,000. Which we were told originally it was bottom line, but you know, it's, it's getting to be confusing where the authority is here, but. It's only bottom line if it's appropriated. Um, but from the school's perspective, I don't know that they, it doesn't matter to them whether it's appropriated or bonded. Well, this is appropriated, right? The middle. It is now. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, so really my original motion was to, to reduce the <laughs> appropriation line by, uh, you know, 150. I've now said 50 since we did, already did uh, some reductions on the operating. So that's, you know, that's where it's at. I, I got, if they don't want to do it in the laptop program, you know, it might, it might come out of somewhere else there. Um, it's like you're saying the, uh, it doesn't have to be, uh, it's, it's, you know, we still won't have authority over the top no line, so. Can, can I ask a question of Ruth? Am I misinterpreting it? Once the capital budget is approved, they can't shift things from one project to another, right? They, they have to manage what was approved? If you do it by the line item, yes, I think that's correct. But if you just say we're going to, just like we do with the school's operating budget, if you were to say we want to reduce it and leave that decision to the school board, that may be, uh, better for them because they may need that full hundred, you know, how do you say, sorry, you get a laptop, but you don't because we only had a hundred thousand, not the 150. So that was, that was the only thing I would say. And we would yeah. need a new capital plan by second, by the time we do second reading, right? Say that again? We would need a, a, a final capital plan by the time we do se our second reading. Is that accurate? Correct. Yes. I yep. just need the IT director chimed in. He said uh, the MLTI tech refresh to the middle school for FY21 will cost $300,000. No, I think he's, that was for total, right? They, they already have 150 in for the school, for the high school. Yes, there is 150 in operating funds and this is uh -huh. uh, the extra 150 through CFP. MLTI, what does that stand for? Something laps, laptop initiative. Is that for all laptops or just the middle school? Oh, so 300 is for SMS only. Okay, gotcha. All right. Well, you know, so I, I, I'm not focused on the laptops, um, you know, I, and I wasn't, and I think Ruth just said, you know, it's, it's, it's a bottom line. So I, I go back to what I proposed, which is a motion to reduce the, you know, the capital budget by $50,000 and, you know, how that works out between now and the end, I, I don't know. Yeah, the, your, your motion could simply be changing so this 319015 is now plus 150. It'd be reducing that number by 50,000. Right. And, 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 and you already and, reduced it for them, I guess, even though they didn't approve it by the 50 and the 80, right? We put that in. We took the 50 and the 80 out. You did in your suggestions, right? For the playground maintenance and the paving. And I did that out of convenience. The numbers work, but I, I could, I don't have an opinion as to what's more important than another. I would suggest you size the total amount of appropriation and let them allocate it as they see fit. Exactly. And that's what I was trying to do. We just got hung up on the laptop conversation because I think, you know, John said, well, I needed to specify, but we already specified because they didn't take out the paving. They didn't take out the playgrounds. You took the paving and the playgrounds out. And so I'm just, my motion is to reduce that number um, by 50,000. Okay. So not a specific line item. It's it, that is consistent with the way Tom has got these others positioned. It's just a reduction in the capital appropriated budget 
they're going to determine where he is. Presumably, we'll have a, a, a schedule that we'll be able to look at and be part of the packet for the second read. Is, is that what we're saying, Tom? Is, is how this would be structured? Yeah, frankly, the budget order itself, uh, you know, is, is simply affecting the aggregate numbers. It does not okay. concern itself with the details. So uh, unless you want that level of detail, and I might suggest yeah. that, that would be a complicating factor. Okay, so uh, your but yours so yours is always intended when you put this one hundred fifty thousand in, it was a global number, and they will make they will rearrange their capital appropriated items to however they see fit to hit the number. Is, is what you're saying. accordingly? Yes. Okay. Yes. So so with that, I think Colette, are you ready to take a vote on Betsy's motion? Yes. Let's vote on the motion, Councillor Hayes. Yes. Councillor Clucci. No. Councillor Glystein? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Is it typical for us to split a, a single project between operational and capital budgets? You know, John, I think, I, I think how we got there is it goes back to we at one point when we had the joint finance committee said we need to move toward all of these going to appropriations going forward and then because it's such a large number then the conversation became we can't do that all at once so then we kind of have this hybrid we'll move toward it by putting 50 percent toward operational 50 percent toward capital um i think tom isn't that how we we kind of got to that splitting it between operational and capital yeah, I think it's the school's valiant attempt at, at really trying to carry these uh, year over year expected costs in their operating budget. Uh, again, they have a similar goal to us uh, uh, to, to convert those sorts of expenses that recur are reoccurring and get them over into the into the operating budget. It just it's at the expense of tax rate. And so uh, try as we might, um, we seem unsuccessful. Okay, so then I think Tom that navigates us is as clear as mud for you on how this goes together, or do or you no, think? I, okay. I think we, we we've tracked it. Okay. Yep. So again, for this group, for the finance committee, all we're going to be doing is these are our recommendations for the full town council for their consideration. My experience in the past has been each counselor then can bring forth anything they want to adjust. And Tom, usually there's maybe a couple amendments potentially that come forth in that process. Yeah, there, there's no limit, but I do encourage you to be very careful about what you bring forward. Just um, yeah. in the course of a, uh, a, a you know, a, a, a public meeting, uh, it gets cumbersome in terms of uh, parliamentary yeah. procedure and making sure everyone understand what's being proposed and what the impact of that is. So please be careful what you bring forward, but there's no limit to that either. So, so I think that the items based on our conversation as a finance committee, and I think as we summarize this out, I think we do need to, to know where we weren't, we weren't unanimous on something and where there was differences of opinions. I think that's really important. Um, I think where we are is potential items, it sounds like that might come forward. Tom will be, there needs to be a conversation as we have had about do we want to do something on the COLA side? And as Betsy has said, the per diem hours, for now that's just a placeholder for the terminology. Um, we're going to talk about the senior tax credit and just confirm that it's, it's either in or out of the budget. And then I think on some of the things we just have talked about, we will be the conversation, is it an increase to the mill rate or the total taxpayer ask? Or is it not on some of the items that you consider? Is that a fair? I think what you've what you've done today actually decreases the ask to the taxpayer by fifty thousand. Yeah. Thanks. So, to your point, Peter, uh, the minutes will, I'm sure Colette will do a bang up job. Uh, will reflect the discussion and certainly record your votes so your colleagues can see how the, the committee dealt with these issues. But the you know the prevailing votes will be incorporated into a single amendment, not unlike what we have here that will be going to the council. I presume they'll accept that uh, as the first motion offered yeah. and uh, more than likely will accept it. Um, 
And then there are subsequent amendments that may be offered. And Councillor Gleistein, I'm pleased to work with you to prepare the one that you um, have articulated today. And it sounds as though that will not be a tremendous surprise to folks and hopefully gar garner support. Right. Um, so, yes. And I would like to make a, you know, a request um, here. I can also put it in writing, but I'd, I'd like a breakdown of that TIF number, the 1799, what that involves. Um, so I could understand if I want to bring a motion forward um, to readjust uh, some of that TIF revenue that is held in different accounts and doesn't apply to the general fund. So um, if I could have a breakdown of that, as well as, um, you know, if there are existing TIF funds that have money monies in them, um, these are potentially expected money. So let's say one TIF has 5,000 in it and we're expecting another 100,000 in it. So um, that we could see, you know, what, what that looks like. Um, Council, I'd ask you to reduce that request to writing. I, I will do our level best. It is now noon on Friday. Our meeting, we need to get materials out the door today. So That's uh, I'll, I don't, I don't, I, I don't need it today. I just need it, you know, so that I could get it out uh, to people before, before the meeting. Understood. Um, understood. I, I'm just saying my focus today is going to be able to right. uh, really package up what the committee has done. So yes, the that agenda is definitely complete. the most important focus, but yep. um, I need the breakdown on that so that I can bring that um, TIF amendment forward for the line item that's the TIF because really we haven't discussed, you know, we brought it up, but it hasn't been discussed much because it's, it's kind of a, a line item and, you know, at the bottom of the mill rate. Please, please send an email just so I'm sure that I understand what your uh, your needs are. We'll do our best to respond. Okay, great. Thank you. So, so before we open this up to public comment, Tom, do you have, it sounds like you think you have what you need to be able to produce the documents you need for our discussion at the second read. I say that, but I'm looking directly at Ruth. Um, <laughs> I feel as though I've tracked things. I think, I, Ruth, please speak up if there's any question. I think we have, I, I've got the three items. One is to reduce, one is to change the school CIP from bonding to appropriated on the 150, to reduce the school's operation budget by 150, and then to reduce the school's capital by 50,000. And we're allowing them to make that decision on where they want to make that adjustment. In a nutshell, that's what that's the product of the, the meeting today. Yes. And then did, we didn't really decide on anything with the senior property tax relief, correct? But so that's still going to stay. We're showing it. Well, d d I think by virtue of you, if you accept my recommendation, it's being removed. The funding's being removed. Okay. okay. Yeah, we had decided that we'd bring it as it's presented. Okay. Thank you. So everybody, John, I know you're not. You know, this will be again, these are only our recommendations in order for us to kind of as a starting point on the second read. I don't know how the other counselors will weigh in. I think these are all rich conversations. So I, I think that's and it looks like we're also we got a bunch of um, questions. You do. You have um, three people with their hands up. The first one is Councillor Hamill. He raised his hand just in order of, of hands that I saw being oh. raised. He was first. He waited. I didn't I actually. I didn't see your hand, Don. I apologize. So I I raised my hand so long ago in the meeting that I lost track of the question. So it was either been answered or I've completely lost it. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm okay. Thank you. I, my apologies. I wasn't paying as much attention as I should have. My apologies. It wasn't okay. that important anyway. But thank you. <laughs> okay, and then you have um, school board members Sarah Layton and. Uh, Hillary Durkin, both with their hands up. Do you want me to bring them in as panelists or as speakers? Whatever they're comfortable with, whatever they want to do. All right, ladies, I'm going to bring you in as panelists. Um, just hide your video if you don't wish to be seen. Don't we hide video on? Not uh, as panelists. OK. So ladies, you're in. You'll just need to unmute yourself. Hello. We can hear you. Hello. Oh, this is Hillary. 
Hi. Um, so sorry, my view changed, so I can't see you guys anymore. And um, so I had um, a bunch of clarifications around the middle school laptop program, but um, it sounds like I'm too late for that. I had my hand up during that. Um, but then I also, um, unless you're still interested in them, but I also um, had a clarifying question. It sounds to me like between your two amendments, so um, as I'm understanding it, you, you, so you moved um, the laptops from being bonded to being appropriated and then to offset that cost of the appropriations, you reduced the operating budget, which is separate from the capital budget by $150,000. And then additionally, you also reduced the capital budget, the appropriated capital budget by $50,000. So to me, that's a reduction of $200,000, which was more than the laptop. Am I not understanding that correctly? Yeah, I mean, a, a couple of things, Hillary. I think one, we didn't move. I mean, the laptops have always been an appropriation all the way through the budget process. It was only- sorry, Yeah, I understand that. You, sorry, right. So you re you retained it in appropriations, but- Yeah, I mean, Tom, rest, right. we didn't take any action. Tom proposed that to us earlier this week, but we didn't take any action. It's always been appropriated. Right. So sorry, so I misspoke. I, I, did, I, did, I did know that, but in order to offset that appropriations, is, am I correct that you took- $150,000 and removed it from the operating budget? Well, no, we, uh, in the numbers that we use that were paired by Tom that we had looked at earlier in the week, because we moved it from, a, you know, you know, appropriations to budget that adjusted that number. I mean, it, it, it basically came out of your operating budget uh, because we moved it over to bonding in the exhibit that was done. Tom, I think, Probably at this point, the most helpful thing to do would be to do the tax, you know, the tax worksheets and see where this all falls out as compared to, to where we were. I mean, it's kind of hard to follow, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's not like from the, the prior sheets that we have, um, it's hard to explain. I don't, I, that's not a direct reduction from the numbers you guys have been carrying. It, it's a reduction from the number that Tom produced last week or this earlier this week, that actually had added back 150,000 to your operating budget because he was proposing to move the laptops from appropriation to bonded. So, okay, that so that was really unclear. So, can I clarify again that our the operating budget that we presented wasn't actually changed? It was Tom's proposal that you guys had discussed at your last finance meeting, and you had adopted his proposal. Took the hundred and Fifty thousand dollars from appropriations, added it to bonding, and then added it into our operating budget. Yeah, that's right. And and it was uh, this is really kind of, we didn't table the meeting from uh, Wednesday, but this is the part two of that meeting. Tom, you know, we had been given those um, suggestions by Tom that you saw them the same time. At least I saw them you know if you were watching the meeting so yeah we have you know that's why we actually had this quick meeting again on friday because we had to digest what he had uh presented on wednesday yeah and so yeah he had moved some numbers but i think you know we're going back through basically what he presented and making our our final call on it um is that was that an accurate, accurate representation or, or are we confusing ourselves? I think you're confusing yourself. Um, just be clear, there's a capital budget and there's an operating budget. And so by actions that you've taken today, uh, you certainly made changes to the capital budget by shifting yes. uh, back to or keeping it appropriated. But in addition to that, you modified and reduced, I should say, the operating budget by a similar amount, by 150. And remember, the exercise that I undertook earlier this week uh, was to identify $530,000 in funding to ensure the pandemic costs were, were covered. And I expect those will, those are technically operating funds. We're kind of 
talking about them separately, but I, I do expect that they are considered operating funds. Uh, they'll need to be. So. Yeah. Yes, they will. But Tom, so I, so I'm correct. You didn't add one hundred and fifty thousand dollars back into our operating budget as a part of your proposal. You no. were just talking about covering the COVID costs with part of that one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So now my understanding is that you've additionally reduced our operating budget by one hundred and fifty thousand dollars by this amendment, as well as reducing the capital budget by an additional fifty thousand dollars. Right. But maybe a better way to look at it is what gets raised by taxes. So we break it out on the tax sheet, but you know what gets raised by taxes is what's appropriated along with the operating budget. So, um, right. But my point is, Peter was saying they're just taking out the hundred and fifty thousand dollars that that Tom added in on his proposal, and that's not the case, as I understand it. Hillary, right. I think you've properly. Uh, reflected it yes okay so you are reducing the operating budget by an additional hundred and fifty thousand dollars is that what you meant to do <laughs> maybe Todd can you now I'm confused and sort of the adjustments we made I thought we were working off anyway can you before the materials go out this afternoon, can you redo the tax calculation worksheets? The one, I'm assuming the one that we had worked off of on June 16th, which shows us with all these adjustments arriving at still at the mid range, the 1.16%, we were going to the, the taxpayer ask was 69, 989, 970. Mm -hmm. So, maybe if you guys could work through i know there's just lots of numbers at play here can you work through the numbers that we just did today and send us in the finance committee this adjusted tax worksheet so we can actually see the net impact of what we did today certainly and, and if it helps you we can pull up the tax rate comp sheet and i think i can modify it almost on the fly for you so you can see it real time i say that ruth yeah, well, I don't, I mean, I, I'll send it out later if that's helpful. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, we're two hours in. I think there's some other yep. questions, but I, I think. Okay. Yep. I'd like to see how that works through just to make sure, you know, I may have confused myself. I, I just want to make sure I thought. So anyway, it will be yep. helpful to see where that, that arrives. And then if we need to make an adjustment, we can. Okay, very well. I'll send it out right after. So, sorry, Peter, can I clarify? Like when would, if that is. If that turns out to not be what you were had in mind when you were doing your amendments, how would that be adjusted? Because this $150,000 removed from our operating budget is a lot of, I mean, that's a, that's a huge cost for the schools to absorb. Yeah, let me, I mean, Hillary, thank you for the question. As I said, we, I think there, we had so many conversations this afternoon. Tom needs to, when we take a look at the sheet, if it's not what we intended to do, I will work with my colleagues. If it's not what we intended to do, we will make the appropriate change before before the second read, which happens next Wednesday. Okay, thanks. I was just, yeah, I was just trying to gain clarity on that. Yeah, no, thank you. Thanks for putting it out. We may have confused ourselves. It's easy to do. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Are there other questions, Larissa? Hey, I don't know if I missed my opportunity to speak. I was having some oh. audio issues. Do you mind if I jump in no, now? Absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you. So this is just another clarifying point. And I, I know it's been two hours, but I actually would find it very helpful if you guys could find a way to reconcile those numbers so we have that information um, available to us publicly now. Um, but I, because what I'm trying to do is I'm looking at what we passed last night at our second reading, which is um, just looking at the operating budget, our net budget total is about 48437000 And I think with the operating budget that you guys had put forward originally, it uh, was about 47800000 And then you reduced, you added the 533 for COVID in and then reduced 150. So if you're following me still, uh, we're at about 48265000 which still leaves a pretty big gap 
for the school about almost about two hundred thousand dollars that's not including the CIP, so it'd be more for CIP. So I guess the reason why I'm asking this is because it's important that I know and I understand why you guys have done the process the way you have, because you're you're um, going from what you approved at first reading. But I also think that when you talk about this next week, it's important that we show the delta between what the board has has approved at their second reading and then what you guys are approving because yep. there's That's already right. without re, without reducing by another essentially two hundred thousand dollars which you did today there's already a, a delta that we're going to have to make up. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I and at this point the numbers for me are just I'm more confused than not at this point. So I think those 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 are great. So we will. I think you've heard Tom say we may have confused ourselves. Tom, um, he's got lots to do today, but you know whether Tom will reproduce the, the sheets, we can reconnect. If it's not what we intended to do, then the finance committee will make the appropriate adjustments. And in a time enough, in a timely, so Tom can still get out the materials. Okay. Um, Council Yeah, I, I would like to comment, um, you know, this is a town council finance committee meeting. I'd like to highlight the fact that uh, we're pretty generous in terms of allowing the public to participate and for, uh, you know, for having uh, panelists, you know, chime in real time before we've even had a chance to, you know, to uh, re, you know, to complete the analysis of the work that we've done just in the past two hours. So I'd just like to highlight the fact that I do not believe there's a similar opportunity for uh, for town councilors to participate in a in a fashion like that in you know in school finance committee uh, deliberations. So I I just want to highlight the fact that we are we you know going to to great lengths to try to you know encourage and incorporate feedback. And I would hope that our you know folks that just weighed in would uh, would take that in the right spirit going forward. Thank you. Am I still on? Sure. Yes, you can you can take us off, Don. Sorry, I, I also wasn't yeah. aware that you were a member of the finance committee. So I think that we're being afforded the same privilege that you are, and I appreciate that. So thank you. I do too. Thank you, Peter. Thank Good. you. Are you guys, Hiller, you did you have something else, or you just wanted to? No, I just wanted to be demoted and if <laughs> and to say thank you for. Uh, I mean, I I am a citizen too, so thank you for listening to my comments. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. The comments were Thank helpful. I think definitely the second read um, needs to uh, reflect what the school board passed for the second read. And um, I'll just add that, uh, uh, you know, I was the one who wanted to make an amendment to the motion of the 150. K. So um, I, I understand where it is now. Um, and uh, you know, I'm comfortable with where it, where it is now. It wasn't where I was going, but um, so I do really appreciate the clarified question. Of, um, I thought it was quite helpful. Yeah. Um, just something to think about. Obviously, working this stuff on the fly, we can't think through all the details, but it, it occurred to me that given that half of this middle school research project is already in the operating budget, a cleaner approach may have been to simply reduce the capital budget by 150,000 and That's increase nice. the yeah. Uh, operating budget by an offsetting 150,000. Uh, that's something you guys can think about. But it... yeah, no, John. I, again, I, I'll, I'll rely on Tom. I, I've, I've got. I'm not sure I process it correctly either. So let's. Yeah. You know, I, I think Tom Sheets will be very helpful. To and I think the question asked: Did we do what we thought we wanted to do or does it have unintended consequences and if it's not what we wanted to do Betsy just said that then you know well we no need no I, I, I think I I'll look back okay. I'll look back to everybody and you know maybe we can do it and if it's not the intent that we wanted then we need to correct it so I think I understood what I vote voted for and yeah. you know so I, I you know I'm, I'm okay with where we're at the the motion that I was going to bring forward was what John just said was a 150 cut to the operating when people, I mean, to the capital and people like, well, you, you know, you got to specify the line item, whatever, and then no, no subsequent increase to operating. So not quite what John brought forward, but I'm comfortable with where we are now. And I, I know what I voted on. So 
Yeah, I mean, I, I just want to, I just want to see that, you know, I think all of us would feel more comfortable once we see, once all of these changes we just talked about, and, and I think Tom and Ruth are clear about what they are, let's see what it does to the tax pump, you know, where, where we end up at the end of this process. And if it's not where we intended, then I will, I'll reach back out to everybody. Right. I, t I totally agree. And of course, my perspective is a little different because I had wanted to, um, you know, increase the municipal budget by 150, which would have adjusted um, that piece of the mill rate. So we'd be, you know, we'd be 100 different on the mill rate, um, you know, whatever that equates to, because I would have increased by, if my motion had passed, it would have increased by 150, the municipal side. And then um, I think we have a $50,000 reduction on the school side at this point when all is said and done. So the mill rate would have been up just a little bit, um, but as it stands, that's not gonna, that, that motion failed. So um, I'll be bringing, bringing that forward separately uh, and uh, you know, hoping to find a way to, to pay for that 150, but I, I, I don't even wanna say it that way. I just think it's the right thing to do for the employees of the town. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean at the end of the day, we still, if we're gonna bring forward that COLA adjustment that you have suggested, I think there's support for, we're still gonna have the same conversation about where does it get funded. So at the end of the day, exactly. You know, anyway, Tom, does that, do you have what you need? <laughs> I know the time's ticking. Um, I appreciate everybody's time. Um, Tom, just let us know, John and Betsy, when you get that tax sheet, take a look and just let me know what you guys, you know. John, you, you have figured out in your head what it's done? I think Ruth has. I have Ruth's the tax rate sheet. It's done. Lisa? I do have the tax rate sheet done. It the bottom line is that it reduces your total net budget by fifty thousand. Well, that's what Tom. it does reduce the school's operating budget by a hundred and fifty thousand, just as um, the yep. school board Hillary said, and it reduces the school's capital also by the fifty thousand. And so essentially, operating reduces the net budget for the school and then the capital reduces 50,000 or yeah i can so send that to somebody if they want so you can take a look at yep. it Would that be yeah easier? let us i i i, I it, it's all it's all swimming for me right now so yeah we'll huddle, we'll huddle and then uh, recirculate uh, documents uh, this afternoon to you all okay yep. great and then john that's just and then we can huddle this Thank afternoon you. We need to do. Okay, thanks for everybody's patience. This has been painful. Um, Ruth, Ruth, uh, Ruth Collette, and Larissa, can you stay on? Yes. Yeah. Um, we have a motion. motion. Yeah. John's motion. Seconded. Who seconded? Second. Peter. Councillor Hayes. Yes. Councillor Clucci. Yes. Councillor Glycine. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, I am going to call this. Uh, this is a Scarborough Town Council Wednesday, June 24th, 2020 virtual special town council meeting. It starts at 6 p.m. I'm going to call it to order. The first item on the agenda is we are going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. Okay, and next we have roll call, Cody. Here. Councilor Hayes. Here. Councilor Kleistein. Here. Councilor Katarina. Here. Council Johnson? Uh, here. Council Hamill? Here. And Chairman Johnson? Here. All present. Thank you. And before I call the first order of business, I'm going to remind everybody in the audience we are about to go into exec executive session until 6 30. So we will be 
off the air until 6.30. So if you are one of the 29 people in attendance right now, please feel free to mute us and walk away and do something uh, with your own time until 6.30. Um, order number 20058 is act on the request for an executive session pursuant to Title I of MRSA 4056C in consultation with legal counsel regarding the settlement agreement with Oak Hill Holdings LLC at all for a tax abatement for tax year 2018. And do I have a motion? So moved. Motion. Second. And Tody? Councillor Pucci? Yes. Councillor Hayes? Yes. Councillor Gleistein? Yes. Councillor Catalina? Yes. Councillor Johnson? Yes. Councillor Hamill? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. It's unanimous. Thank you. With that, I'm going to ask every councillor, please put your mic on mute and please turn off your camera because you're going to go into executive session into Google Meet. So everybody, please turn off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's here. I see his name with the blade of the black tile. Oh, really? Um, you're not on mute. Yeah, I thought I did. <laughs> 